Hello to all the enthusiastic learners who have come here to know more about Hitler's Germany and its past. We are doing a video series of NCIT Class 9, Nazism and Rise of Hitler. And this video is part of part 4 of the video series. Here we learn what all were the means used by Hitler and his associates to regain the economy and dignity lost by the German citizens in the First World War. Let's have a quick recap of what we have done in our last lectures through visualization using a timeline. We started with a quote of Gandhi where he emphasized what means are. If we have to achieve an end and your means has to be good. If means are good, then the end is good. If means are bad, then the end is bad. This is what we understood. The means should be good. And the second thing, we were learning the whole chapter in terms of events which were leading to an idea called as Nazism. And later, what did Nazi followers do? The chapter started with Helmut's father killing himself. Why was Helmut's father killing himself? Because he had a fear of allies taking revenge against Germany. The event number one which was associated with German citizens was lost in First World War where Germany had participated in the First World War against UK, France, USSR and USA. But eventually Germany lost the war and also the dignity which they had. The monarch of Germany had left Germany without any political representation. Now, to restore the dignity, German citizens had, in a hope of respite, choose democracy as their political representation. Eventually, birth of Weimar Republic was formed on the basis of socialism. German parliament or Reichstag was formed. But Reichstag was forced to accept Treaty of Versailles, giving away most of the land of German Germany to the Allied powers, also demanding the war reparations, which was very harsh and humiliating. Apart from that, it was not solving the problem of German citizens that which the respite which they asked for. Hence, whoever represented the German citizens in the democracy, they were called as November criminals. There was only one solution for this, that is to eliminate Reichstag. And the opposition to the democratic government came from Spartacist League. This Spartacist League was based on communism, which was nearly equal to socialism, but there was a slight difference. In socialism, the resources are shared amongst the people who are giving more to the society. But in communism, the resources are shared to the people who are needing more in the society. And Spartacist League was based on the objective of social equality and it also opposed war. Eventually, Spartacist League formed Communist Party of Germany. The German citizens were looking for some kind of dictatorship because the democratic government which they had elected was not solving their cause. The next event which happened in German citizens' life was in 1923, that was the economic crisis. The war reparations which were to be paid to the Allied powers were to be paid in gold. But the gold was started depleting. French occupied leading industrial area of Ruhr to exchange of gold. Once they occupied the industrial area, German citizens lost their jobs. Looking at the plight of Germans, Americans tried to help Germany, but eventually they also fall trapped to a Wall Street exchange collapse. When they fell trapped to Wall Street exchange collapse in 1929, they could not help Germany anymore. Hence, without gold, Germany started printing more money, but it led to a blunder of inflation. The employers were in a fear of proletarianization and the only solution was to provide employment. Who is going to give this employment? Who is going to eliminate Reichstag? And who is going to restore this dignity? All these were the questions which were running in the German citizen's mind. And the event 4 was the defects in constitution of Weimar Republic, where there was only proportional representation with no majority solving the utilitarian cause. The second reason was Article 48, which gave the president the power to impose emergency and which suspended civil rights and rule by decree which was against the principles of democracy. In the same period of time, with the associated events, there was one person who was looking 
closely what is happening that was hitler he was born in 1889 during the war he was in the army and he served the army as a corporal in 1919 when germany took up a democratic republic as their political representation hitler joined germans worker party later he took over germans worker party and renamed it as national socialist german workers party that was nazi party being the principle of socialist hitler was against communist what were the two reasons why hitler was against communist is they advocated resource to resources to be distributed to the needy and the second was they did not want war but hitler who lost the war fighting for germany wanted to take back his revenge against france against uk against ussr as well as usa now the second event which was linking in hitler is the economic crisis which was happening in 1923 the same event has happened is giving problem to hitler now once losing the war hitler is already hurt and with so much of unemployment around him he is not able to keep quiet and hence he planned to take over the whole government by attacking the democracy by attacking the reichstag by attacking the parliament itself and hence he planned to seize the control of bavaria and then seize berlin but he was arrested later on the charges of treason why because the means which he is using to gain power is against the democratic principles of germany he got 5 years of jail and later after when he came out in 1928 from the jail he said i will take part in the democracy and i'll come into the government eventually nazi party did not get more than 2.6 percentage of votes in the reichstag or the parliament now let us understand why will anybody vote to a person who goes against the principles of democracy in a democratic government so that is the reason nobody voted in the sense very few people voted to hitler but hitler's good luck changed in 1929 because of the wall street exchange which was collapsed in america germany was leading into more inflationary problems and unemployment was increasing now the german citizens have no jobs and the government is not helping the german citizens even though they are trying to help they are not able to help because given the economic condition so nazi party took up this as their manifesto and where the in their utilitarian principle they started assuring that they will give employment as well as living spaces now we have to understand who does not want employment everybody needs a good job everybody needs a good home to live their life eventually the nazi party used mass mobilization techniques and they showed hitler as a god and red banners with swastika and the nazi salutes the rational the ritualized rounds of applause all were part of his spectacle powers and he had his own ministry that was propaganda ministry in 1933 when he came into power he is having 37 percentage of votes nobody can ignore it so president heidenberg offered him a chancellorship in the government which was the highest position after the president but what did hitler want hitler wanted to take over the government so there was a mysterious fire which happened in the parliament building using the fire decree that is the fire law on 28th of february 1933 he indefinitely suspended the civic rights like freedom of speech press assembly that had been guaranteed by weimar constitution later he gave an enabling act which established dictatorship in germany when the dictatorship has been established they had to control the communist they had to control whoever opposed the war hence he wanted force so security forces were created apart from that gestapo secret service police were created and he gave power for them to rule with impunity also he established concentration camps to eliminate whoever were weak and opposing the war and the name which was given to it was anti semitism because he hated jews other challenge for hitler once after coming to power was revival of economy he had two options one is to improve the infrastructure and create more jobs there was a good economist in germany who gave this suggestion to hitler 
but Helgemer's charge, who aimed at full production and full employment through the state-funded work program, was not being heard. Hitler said, I will go to war, because war was an easier way to revive economy and a faster way for Hitler. And also, why, if at all, if Hitler wins the war, what would happen? The dignity which was lost by the German citizens will be restored. And hence, Hitler chose war. Eventually, he got back Rhineland, Austria, which had been captured by Germany. And then, Germany invaded Poland. This started a war with France and England. One year later, there was a tripartite pact which was signed between Germany and Italy. And in 1941, as Hitler had promised in his manifesto that he would be giving living spaces to the German citizens, attacked Soviet Union which was in the east of Germany. He attacked the Soviet Union which was in the east. Now, we know Germany fought with UK in, and France mainly and USSR and USA supported later. But why didn't they attack France first and why did they attack USSR first? Because USSR had much bigger land than France and already Germany had captured Rhineland from France and Germany was thinking France has already lost the war. But it was very bad decision of Hitler to go against the Soviets because Soviets were much 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 more stronger than Germany. And hence, in 1945, when Japan extended its support to Hitler and bombed the US bases at Pearl Harbor, US entered the Second World War and the war ended in May 1945 with Hitler's defeat and US dropping the bomb, atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. So in today's lecture, what we're going to see is what were the methods used by Hitler to establish his control in in a democratic country and how did he become dictator and what were the things which he did to change the culture of Germany. So here we're seeing how did Nazis view the world as? How, what, what was Hitler's view about the whole world and what did he perceive world, world as? Hitler's view was a view of Darwin's socialism or social Darwinism. He says, for the earth, it is not allowed to anyone, nor it is presented to anyone as a gift. It is awarded by providence to the people in their hearts have the courage to conquer it, the strength to preserve it, and the industry to put it to the flow. The primary right of this world is the right to life, and so far as one possesses the strength for this. Hence, on the basis of the right, a vigorous nation will always find an adapting its territory to the population size. This is what Hitler is saying. Hitler is saying, whoever are courageous enough to conquer a state will preserve it and they will use it. Meaning, he is applying Darwin's theory of survival at the fittest to human race. Based on this principle, what all crimes did Hitler do? That is what we are going to see in this chapter and this in lecture. The crimes that Nazis committed were linked with the system of belief and set of practices. Nazi ideology was synonymous with Hitler's worldview. According to this, there was no equality between people, but only a racial hierarchy was there. In the view, blonde, blue-eyed, Nordic German Aryans were at the top, while Jews were located at the lowest rung. They came to be regarded as anti-race, the arch enemies of Aryans. All colored people were placed in between depending upon the external features. So he says only Nordic German Aryans are top and all the other species, all the other kind of race people are low. Hitler's racism borrowed from the thinkers like Charles Darwin and Herbert, Herbert Spencer. Darwin was a natural scientist who tried to explain the creation of plants and animals through concept of evolution and natural selection. Herbert Spencer later added the idea of survival of the fittest. According to this idea, only the species survived on earth that could adapt themselves to the changing climatic conditions. We should bear in mind that Darwin never advocated human intervention in what he thought was a purely natural process of selection. 
However, his idea was used by racist thinkers and politicians to justify the imperial rule over the conquered people. The Nazi government was simple. The strongest race would serve, survive and the weakest ones would perish. The Aryan's race was finest. It had to retain purity, become stronger and dominate the world. So this is what Hitler is saying. Hitler is believing in what? He is believing in social Darwinism. Wherein he believes that Aryan race is the strongest and all the other race are to be ended. So other as aspects of Hitler's, Hitler's ideology related to geopolitical concept of Lebensraum or living space. He believed that new territories had to be acquired for settlement. This would enhance the area of the mother country while enabling the settlers on the new land to retain the intimate link with the place of origin. This would also enhance the material resources and the power of German nation. His thinking state is like an organism. Organism, whenever it eats more, whenever it is reproducing, it needs more space. It needs more space. When say a person gets married, he'll have their children and their children needs more space and their children will need more space and hence a state is acting as an organism according to Hitler. Hitler intended to extend German boundary by moving eastward to concentrate all the Germans geographically in one place. Poland became the laboratory for his experimentation. Second thing, what did he do? He started to establish a racial state. Once in power, Nazis quickly began to implement the dream of creating an exclusive racial community of pure Germans by physically eliminating all those who were seen as undesirable and in an extended empire. As I said to you, when anybody is going to war, if the war, war soldiers are weaker, then I will also die. If say I am, I am going to a war, if my partner is weaker and he is not able to give me the support, even I will die. This is what the idea of Hitler is, right? So Nazi wanted only a society of pure and healthy Nordic Aryans. They alone were considered desirable. Only they were seen as worthy of prospering and multiplying against all the others who were classed as undesirables. This meant that even those Germans who were seen as impure and abnormal had no right to exist in Nazi Germany. Under euthanasia program, Helmut's father along with other Nazi officials had condemned to death many Germans who were considered mentally or physically unfit. This is what I was explaining. Jews were not the only community classified as undesirable. There were others. Many gypsies, black living in Nazi Germany, were considered as racial inferiors who threatened the biological purity of superior Aryan race. They were widely persecuted and even the Russians and Poles, Poles are the people who are living in Poland, were considered subhuman. Hence, the undeserving of any humanity. When German occupied Poland, parts of Russia captured civilians were forced to walk as, work as slave laborers. Many of them died simply through hard work and starvation. Jews remained the worst sufferers in Nazi Germany. Why did Nazi hate Jews so much? Because Nazi hatred of Jews had precursor to the traditional Christian hostility towards Jews. They had been stereotyped as killers of Christ and Usurus. See, Jews were considered the people, the ancestors of the Jews were the people who killed Christ. This is what the Christians believe. But what Hitler is doing, he is charging all the Jews for a mistake which has been done by few people of Jewish community. That was wrong. The other thing is, Jews are viewed as money lenders. Now, what is the work of money lender? He gives money so that some people will do business and gives them back the interest. A community of people, they are doing this business. Right? What is wrong in this? But, in 1923, when the economic crisis happened, Jews were the people who were most affluent, right? So that is the reason Hitler developed hatred towards them. And Jews were barred from owning land and they survived mainly through trade and money lending. They lived in separate markets, marked areas called as ghettos. 
Ghettos are the places where they were living. They are often persecuted through periodic organized violence and expulsion from the land. However, Hitler, Hitler's hatred of Jews was based on pseudo-scientific theories of race. Pseudo-scientific is it's not proven through scientific theory of race. Which held the conver conversion was a so no solution to Jewish problem. It could be solved only through elimination. Now Hitler is saying, if you convert from Jewish to any other community, it would not be a solution. Killing them, eliminating Jews from the entire German territory is the only solution is what he is proposing. From 1933 to 1938, Nazis terrorized, pauperized, segregated the Jews, compelling them to leave the country. So they were terrorizing, pauperizing is, they are taking away the, all the prospects of earning money and segregated the Jews, compelling them to leave the country. The next phase, in 1939 to 1945, aimed at concentrating them in certain areas, eventually killing them in gas chambers in Poland. The next one is, what is a racial utopia? Utopia means a world which is completely ideal, where everything seems to be good. A completely ideal world is called utopia. Under the shadow of war, Nazis proceeded to realize their murderous racial ideal, genocide, and war became two-sided of this. Occupied Poland was divided up. Much of northwestern Poland was annexed to Germany. Poles were forced to leave their homes and properties behind to be occupied by ethnic Germans bought in from occupied Europe. Poles were then herald, herded like cattle in the other parts called general government the destination for all the undesirables of the empire. So, what are they doing? Capturing Poland, they are throwing out the Polish people there from there. Members of Polish intelligentsia were murdered in large numbers in order to keep the entire people intellectually and spiritually servile. Now, what happens is, if say somebody is questioning the action of the government, if the uh, government is having good intention, then they will give back the reasons. If the government is not having good intention, what will they do? Whoever is questioning the actions of the government will be put into jail or they want to eliminate them, kill them. Right? So Polish children who looked like Aryans were forcibly snatched from their mothers and examined by the race expert. If they passed the race test, they were raised in German families. If not, they were deposited in orphanages where most perished. With some of the largest ghettos and gas chambers, the general government also served like killing field for Jews. Where is the general government? It is in Poland, where Poland was occupied by the Nazi. What were the steps to the death? The first step is exclusion. Now, people who were Jews, right, they were part of German society. Now, they are saying, you have no rights to live among us. Whoever was supposed to exclude from the German society apart from Nordic German Aryans. They have been saying that they are not part of citizens of Germany. The Nuremberg Law of Citizenship on September 1935. Only persons of German or related blood would be henceforth be German citizens enjoying the protection of German Empire. Marriages between Jews and Germans were forbidden. Extramarital relations between Jews and Germans became a crime. Jews were forbidden to fly the national flag. The other legal measures included boycott of Jewish businesses, expulsion from the government services, meaning all the government jobs from them, they are taking out the Jews, and forced selling and confiscation of the properties. Besides, Jewish properties were vandalized and looted, houses attacked and synagogues burned. Men arrested in a program in November 1938, remembered as the Night of Broken Glass. Synagogues is the place where Jewish people, Jewish people go to worship. Like we go to temple, they go to worship in synagogue. Second step to remove the Jews from them is ghettoization. They are not allowing the Jewish people or whoever is called undesirable to live among them. What are they doing? From September 1941, all Jews had to wear yellow star on David on their breast. The identity mark was stamped on their passport, all the legal documents and houses. They were kept in Jewish houses in Germany, in ghettos like Lodz and Warsaw in the east. These sites 
became extreme misery and poverty jews had to surrender all their wealth before they entered into a ghetto soon the ghettos were brimming with hunger starvation disease due to deprivation and poor hygiene the third stage was annihilation they are saying you have no right to live they just killing jewish the jews from the jewish houses concentration camps ghettos from different parts of europe were bought to death factories by good strain in poland and elsewhere in the east most notably belzic auschwitz sobibor treblinka and also marzenik they were all charred in gas chambers mass killing took place within minutes with scientific precision see we can use science for the betterment of people isn't it we can use science for saving life but how what are the means what hitler is doing to use science is to kill so the means is itself is bad over here now we can understand why did hitler lose the war in the end right because the means which he used himself was used against him in the war and he was being defeated in the war youth in nazi germany hitler was fanatically interested in youth of the country he felt that strong nazi society could be established only by what only by teaching children the nazi ideology what was nazi ideology that was social darwinism this required a control over child both inside and outside the school so he is trying to change the culture of the children what happened in school under nazism all schools were cleansed and purified this meant that teachers who were jews or seen as politically unreliable are dismissed children were first segregated germans and jews could not sit together or play together subsequently the undesirable children jews the physically handicapped gypsies were thrown out of the school and finally in 1940 they were taken to the gas chambers good chum good german children were subjected to process of nazi schooling and a prolonged period of ideological training school textbooks were rewritten racial sciences was introduced to justify nazi ideas of race stereotypes about jews were popularized even through math classes children were taught to be loyal and submissive and hate jews here also they've been teaching to hate jews and worship hitler even the function of sports was to nurture the spirit of violence and ag- aggression among the children hitler believed that boxing could make children iron hearted and strong and masculine youth organizations were made responsible for educating german youth the spirit of nationalism national socialism the 10 year old had entered jung walk at 14 all the boys had to join nazi youth organization the hitler youth where they learned to worship war glorify aggression and violence also they started condemning democracy why hitler was there only to rule and hate jews communist gypsies and all those categorized as undesirable for german society after a period of rigorous ideological and physical training they joined the labor service usually at the age of 18 then they had to serve the armed forces and enter one of the nazis organization the youth league of nazi was founded in 1922 four years later it was renamed as hitler youth to unify the youth movement under the nazi control all the other youth organizations were systematically dissolved and finally banned now next one is nazi cult of motherhood so that was been doing the whatever he was doing with the boys now what is he doing with the girls children in nazi germany were repeatedly told that women were radically different from men the fight for equal rights for men and women had become a part of democratic struggle everywhere which was wrong and it would destroy the society that is what nazis nazi cult is believing well boys were thought to be aggressive masculine and steel hearted girls were told that they had to come become good mothers and rear pure blooded aryan children girls had to maintain the purity of the race and distance themselves from the jews look after the home teach their children nazi values they had to be bearers of aryan culture and race in 1933 hitler said in my state mothers are most important citizens but in nazi germany all mothers were treated not treated equally 
women who were ra- racially undesirable children were punished see who why why will women uh, choose a kid correct women who were was born in the room they will accept them as a kid is it the mistake of the woman who is bearing an undesirable child according to hitler no but he she's been treated badly those who produced racially desirable children were awarded they were given favored treatment in the hospital and were also entitled to concessions in the shops on the the on theater tickets railway fares to encourage women to produce more children honor crosses were were awarded like we get na first prize second prize third prize same way the bronze cross was given for four children silver for six gold for eight or more all aryan women who deviated from prescribed code of conduct were publicly condemned meaning whoever is going against the aryan theory or nazism theory they are publicly condemned and severely punished those who maintained contact with jews poles russians were paraded through the town with shaved heads black and face placards hanging around their necks announcing i have sullied the honor of the nation if at all if anybody is contacting jews poles and russians they are saying they are cheaters many received jail sentence and lost civic honors as well as their husbands and families for the criminal offense now next is art of propaganda how did nazi party gave all the propaganda propaganda is they are giving advertisements nazi regime used language and media with very much care and often to a great effect the term they coined to describe this various practices are not only deceptive deceptive is which is going away from the truth they are chilling nazis never used the word kill or murder in their official communications what did they use then they started using mass killings as special treatment final solution for jews and euthanasia for disabled selection disinfection see such good words they are using they are not they are not using words kill or murder evacuation meant deporting people to gas chambers do you know what gas chambers were called they were called disinfection areas where people were killed and they looked like bathrooms equipped with fake shower heads media was carefully used to win the support for the regime and popularized its world view nazi ideas were spread through visual images films radios posters catchy slogans leaflets in the poster group identified as enemies of germany were stereotyped mocked abused described as evil socialist liberals were represented as weak and degenerate they were attacked in malicious foreign agents propaganda films were made to create hatred for jews the most infamous film the eternal jew the orthodox jew were stereotyped and mocked they were shown with difficult with flowing beards wearing kaftans whereas in reality it was very difficult to distinguish german jews by their outward appearance because they were highly assimilated community meaning jews you could not say by seeing that these are jews they are already in the community they are inside the germany they were referred to as vermins vermins is the uh, in the insects which are not needed like snakes and all right so so that vermins poisonous people rats pest their movements were compared to that of rodents nazis nazism worked on the minds of the people tapped their emotions turned their hatred and anger to those who marked as undesirables look how carefully nazis are changing the culture now this can be done in any any country now in any democracy suppose say in a country where which is highly diverse if if one particular group of people have been persecuted and they have been removed from the country how would they feel by by being a jewish person if at all if we empathize with them then how would we feel that is what is nazi people nazi government is doing now the means which they are using is against the humanity the means which they are using here is against the humanity that is why even gandhi wrote a letter to hitler asking him to stop all this but hitler was hitler he doesn't listen to any person nazi made equal efforts to appeal to all different sections of population they sought to win the support by suggesting that it nazis alone could solve all their problems so all the people are believing only nazi 
is going to solve the problems now as we see even the farmers even the farmers are supporting hitler why because they are against the american capitalism and they are against the marxist bolshevism that is communism that is communism what would ordinary people and what were the crimes against humanity and how did nazism treat them how did common people react to nazism many saw the world through nazis eyes spoke their mind in nazi language they felt hatred and anger surge inside them when they saw someone who looked like a jew they marked their houses of jew and reported suspicious neighbors they genuinely believed nazism would bring prosperity and improve general well-being but not every german was a nazi many organized active resistance to nazism braving police repression and death the large majority of germans however were passive onlookers and apathetic witnesses they were too scared to act to defer to protest they preferred to look away pastor nemeller a resistant fighter observed an absence of protest an uncanny silence amongst the ordinary germans in the face of brutal and organized crimes against the people in nazis empire he wrote movingly about the silence first they came for communist well i was not a communist so i said nothing then they came for social democrats well i was not a democrat or social democrat so i did nothing then they came for trade unionist but i was not a trade unionist then they came for jews but i was not a jew so i did little then when they came for me there was no one left who could stand up for me now see in germany the german citizens are having good relationship with all the people but what is what is hitler doing now when a german citizen is there his friend might be a jew but now the jew is killed his friend might be a democrat who is wanting a democratic society now the democrat is killed now his friend might be a businessman or a trade unionist now the trade unionist is killed right now only who is left out a german citizen is left out but the german citizen himself is alone even before when having his all friends he was happy but now the german citizen is also feeling bad that what the government or the nazi government has done what jews felt in nazi germany is very different story to altogether charlet barrel secretly recorded people's dreams in their in her diary and later published them in highly disconcerting book called third reach of dreams she described how jews themselves began believing in nazi stereotypes about them the rent of the hooked noses black hairs and eyes jewish looks and body movements the stereotypical images published in nazi press haunted the jews they troubled them even in their dreams jews died many deaths even before they reached the gas chambers so look at the plight of jews without any mistake of them born into a jewish family is only a mistake is it it that is what hitler is thinking and what is holocaust the mass killing which nazi party did his holocaust information about the nazi practices had trickled out of germany during the last years of the regime but it was only after the war ended germany was defeated the world came to realize the horrors of what happened inside the germany meaning whatever was happening inside the germany nobody else in the outside the world knew that there been killing jews while germanies were preoccupied with their own plight as a defeated nation emerging out of rubble jews wanted the world to remember the atrocities and sufferings they had endured during nazi killing operations also called the holocaust at its height a ghetto inhabitant has said the said to another that he wanted to outlive the war just for half an hour presumably he meant that he wanted to be able to tell the world what happened in nazi germany so even people who are jewish they have been killing inside a ghetto right they are they are very sad and they are not able to uh, express their grief whom to tell this indomitable spirit to bear witnesses to preserve the documents can be seen in many ghetto and camps inhabitants who wrote diaries kept notebooks created archives on the other hand when the war seemed lost 
Nazi leadership distributed petrol to its functionaries to destroy all the incriminating evidences available in the office. Look at this. The means which they are used is bad and they are trying to hide the means. But anything bad will come back as a karma. This is what has happened to Nazis. Yet the history and memory of Holocaust lives on the memory, memoirs, fictions, documentary, poetry, memorials, museum in many parts of the world today. These are, these are a tribute to the those who resisted it. Whoever resisted the Holocaust, they were truly great and an embarrassing, embarrassing remainder to those who collaborated. Collaborated are the people who supported Nazis cause of killing Jews and other undesirables and warning to those who watched in silence. So if at all, if we are watching in silence that somebody is doing bad to somebody tomorrow, that bad person can be doing bad to me also. So watching in silence is also bad. This is what the story all about Hitler's Germany is. You can see Mahatma Gandhi writing a letter in July 23rd, 1939. He is asking Hitler to stop the war and why he has to use such a good scientific advantage against humanity. Later, when the war was intensifying, he has written a letter in 1940 again to use non-violence as a force because it is a sole force. But Hitler could not listen to Mahatma Gandhi. But we have to understand why Mahatma Gandhi is writing to Hitler also. Mahatma Gandhi, because Hitler is fighting against United Kingdom and we were with United Kingdom. And apart from that, Mahatma Gandhi was a proponent of non-violence. And he wanted to make the world a better place, not only India. So that is the reason he has written a letter to Hitler also. Thank you for watching the video will come up with a good summary video after this particular lecture please watch and like a video thank you